being coerced into not drinking this beer. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, talk about how you beat somebody. Well, I can tell you right now that I have been hit seven times in the head and face with a beer bottle in my life. All sort of a sucker punch deal. Uh, some involved multiple attackers. And in every single case, they brought it down on my head like this, or I got hit back here one time, which all that stuff would come out in Jack's story about me, right? Uh, everything's verified, right? So what happens if somebody swings a beer bottle at me and I can't stop it or just throw something up? I tuck my chin, roll my shoulders and stiffen up or pull the back of my neck and try to catch it on the crown bone. It will break on your head. I, the only thing that gets me in, I, I was wondering if I could, could, could sue somebody when I was younger because I kept my eyes open when one hit my head one time and it busted. And as the beer came down, the, the glue on the back side of the label kept the glass on it. And it put 26 stitches here, eight stitches here, and cut the end of my nose off. I mean, I won the fight because I trapped the feet and went on about my business. So the way I teach beer bottles is if you're really going to use one, you hit them this way, or you go to the eye this way. And one of the things earlier we were talking about is, you know, your elbow position, like when I broke the board. And you want, you want, it's like running a sprint. Your, your, your hands, you know, everyone that teaches you is going to tell you, pick your hands up. Get them above your shoulders. Do this or that. And you should, because it's going to be part of your natural defense. But, Jack, if you hold this. One of the things I'll tell you right now to avoid is when you pull your hands up, how many guys do this, right? You see all the time? We call this an A-frame. You feel good because all this stuff is here, and some really heavy set, thick, muscular guys, they do it out of, out of difficulties. But if Jack is kind of built an A-frame, we're gonna fight, and, and you'll get kind of a little bit of an A, don't be over exaggerated, just kind of tighten up where you feel. First of all, if your fists are in front of your face, you can hit him, hit him all day with his own hand, right? Secondly, there's no defense underneath. And third, there's no defense around the edges. And if you want to bust a spleen, go behind the elbows and nuts, right? But, uh, so this is not defensive. What it has to happen is you want to curl your shoulders, but behind every punch and the way you stand, whether your hands are open or closed, mine are generally open until maybe one inch before I punch. When I trained with Joe Lewis, he put a little bend in his hand. Just before he landed the punch, he would snap it. And other than that, if your hands are loose, you're going to punch faster because you're not using the muscles it takes to pull back, right? So it goes out, pops, and comes back quicker. So it's like a machine. You push and you pull this elbow. Push and pull that elbow. So your elbow is going to be behind uppercuts. It's going to be behind hooks. And it's going to be behind all your punches. So if, that, if you get this alignment, a lot of people miss me and others because they do what you telegraph, right? So when they telegraph, that elbow shoots out. It loses power. You can see it in super slow motion, right? So when I train people, I'll say, I'll say, hit this hand, bang, hit this hand, bang, now hit this hand. See, and they'll start tapping that arm because they'll feel their own. If, if, if he swings and gives a little elbow, say your elbow wings just a little bit, if it hits here before here, your eyes, especially under stress, will pick that up before this. And it's just really hard. So when he throws a punch, I, I, you see that elbow, you're already off to the races, right? One of the things I do, and I just want to throw it out because there's so much we haven't covered, is when people come at me all the time, I'm always going down here really quick. If he's throwing this hand, bang, it's down here, bang. I'm always just elbowing, and then inside the knees, right? And then sweep. But one of the things I really like to do is split the legs out. If a guy takes a big step to punch me, I'll cross him like this. And if you look down here, then I'll cross his, split his legs out from the bottom. You know, if you hit it right and on the run, it'll split him out and actually tear his groin muscles. It's pretty cool, you get all that splitting. But these are just some real quick tips, you know, for everything else we've been doing, right? So Jack, right. questions? Or? I think that's about it. Um, Miho, any other questions? We're here for you. I think that's like a good little gives people a taste of it. Yeah, yeah. It, trust me, there's a lot more. Yeah, Street fights are really more. messy. I'll tell you, before you shut off real quick, I'll just show you. I, I worked this with you the other day over here. Uh, I was in a big fight. I got a beer bottle broke on my head, and then this big football player came and tackled me, and I'm going to the ground. I'd never been on the ground in my life in a street fight, and I was like panic-stricken because there were 250 people in this bar 
And I know when I go down, all I could see was feet, right? So as he grabbed me, he was really tight, and I didn't know what to do. In the real world, his head should have been to the back side of me. He didn't know any better. His head was actually on the inside of me here. So I took what they call, what this thing, they call that the eye of the phoenix, my thumb, and I shot it right down here to the back of his mandibular joint. And on the way down, we'll do, I'm just pushing it like this. And as he takes me to the ground, what happened is his head went up and his head, because he bounced, because my head, hand went down. And all I did was just lock it in front and start choking like this. It's not a typical choke. It looks ass backwards, right? But once you're here, I'm pinning his legs. If he tries to step over me, I'm gonna, shoot, I'm gonna reverse his hips. But from right here, all I do is this. And, and I kept him on top of me. You, you know, felt one like that, have you? He'll, he'll use that in the future. So Jack, come here, I'll show you what that feels like. So you'll have a good idea. This, usually the choke's on the backside, right? So w when I pulled him, I was, I was juking the back of this. When we hit the ground, his head bounced up. And his head, as we hit the floor, it bounced. I went straight here. And then we just rotated into the neck. Right in here, see it? We got the other side here, right? So this is a really good choke. 